So I think I might have figured out what was wrong with me in last week's video. And I think quite a few of you might be able to relate with this, especially here in the UK. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining, because I'm absolutely not. <laughs> um, but you know, we've obviously, we've been in lockdown, we've all been in our respective lockdowns for a while now, you know, and here in the UK at least over the past, or in England, over the past, what, couple of months, if that, we've come out of lockdowns to an extent, um, to where we can socialise fairly normally. And I think it's that that's kind of tired me out a little bit, <laughs> you know, I don't know, like some of my friends and my family watch this, so I don't want to offend any of them. Um, but I find it quite draining, socialising, that's just me, that's my nature. And I, I get recharged when I come out on my own sort of thing, you know. So I think, like I said, I think a lot of you, a lot of you will relate with this, but um, I think I'm just a bit drained from all the socialising. It's not even been that much, <laughs> you know. But I think it's because I or we have not been used to it for so long now. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but pretty sure that's what it is. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Lake District and of course another Wainwright today. We are in the wonderful Langdale Valley, somewhere where it's one of those where I feel like I photograph it all the time but I very rarely come here so it's, it's nice to be here. Um, and we're going to be heading up a fell called Blee Rig and we'll get into it a little bit more but for now, me and the Herdwicks, we've got food, we've got some dindins as well guys. Let's crack on. going on behind me it's very rocky on route up to Blee Rig <laughs> lots of rocky outcrops which is of course fingers crossed anyway gonna be fantastic for the landscape photography and um, Wainwright also says in his guide that it does attract a lot of rock climbers as well I've already seen a few looking like little ants traversing up the side of cliffs um, so hopefully we can observe some of them today and um, he actually says if you want to come watching them this is probably the best place in the whole of the Lake District to get a good view of them but we'll see. Um, so I'm actually taking one of Wainwright's least recommended routes to the top. Not very popular, which is good. I'm out in the middle of the day today. I'm not up for the sunset. It's very busy here in the Lake District, so it's nice to pick, you know, a, a less trodden route, let's say, to get to the top. It's already nice and quiet. I can tell it's going to be nice already. Um, we're actually hiking up a little bit of a, a ravine, actually. Um, a little bit of a small, very, very rocky valley with a subterranean gill or stream at the bottom of it. Um, so I'm not sure how it's going to be. It sounds proper imposing and intimidating, but Wainwright's quite um, calming and reassuring in the way he describes it, that it's not too bad. You know, I think it's going to be hands and, probably hands and knees on occasion. Um, but I'm looking forward to that challenge, you know, can't beat it. And yeah, that's about it. I'm hoping these rocks stick around all the way up to the top. Of course, that's going to be wonderful for the photography because, guys, we're in the Langdale Valley. The views are immense. The background is done and dusted on many occasions as we're looking down there back towards Side Pike. The light is fantastic, let me tell you. Fingers crossed that sticks around. And a lovely bit of detail in the sky as well. This is like ravine the whole way up, is it? It's like yeah. This way up. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you can get out the top. Oh, it opens up a bit now. Actually, down there it was a bit. <laughs> yeah, no, it opens up a bit. Just follow the, the bed of the stream. Oh, mega! All right, cool. Thank you very much. Goodness me, this is steep. Oh, but absolutely class. I'm so glad that I decided to take this route uh, because it's just so different. Look at this behind me. I mean, it probably looks steep even on the video there, but. Uh, it's very rocky, so you know there's lots of things to hold on to, as if that's any sort of consolation. But yeah, 
absolutely class. It was nice to see another couple of people there actually. Um, because this isn't on OS maps or even open street maps, nothing. It's just in Wainwright's guide, you know, random line going up this ravine. So that was nice. <laughs> yeah, and they, they said the view's lovely from the top. Um, I'm not gonna take any photographs just yet. You can see over there, in fact, I'll do a bit of a 360. You can see here, we're very enclosed and um, I'm assuming it's gonna be this way until we start gaining, you know, a decent amount of altitude. So there's not really anything in the distance to photograph yet. We are starting to get some nice views of the top of Lingmore Fell, which is nice. But we know it's gonna start kicking off when we can see down into the Langdale Valley. Class. So, just gonna grab a quick shot here. Uh, I've got the long lens on already, but I can tell already exactly what I'm gonna do before I've even grabbed the shot. Um, and again, I've spoken about this a lot um, recently, sorry. The hay fever, the hay fever, it's arrived, it's arrived. Even after an antihistamine <laughs> this morning. Um, but yeah, we've been talking about this a lot recently with the photography where I'm just boxing off areas before I even put my camera bag down. Never mind, got the camera or tripod out or anything like that. And I'm just looking off into the distance and look here, I'll draw a little box around it on the screen. This is just what I saw, you know? So I'm forgetting the rest of the landscape, the wider landscape, you know, the Langdale Valley, um, the whole stretch of Lingmore Fell. I'm not bothered because I'm boxing off this tiny little area here where we've got this tree leaning in to the rest of the vista where we've got side pike, um, pike oblisco, and I think right up in the background, um, I think is it this one here, this sort of silhouette almost, this haze of weatherlum and maybe swirl how up there in the background. So that's what I'm gonna do. And this is live, I haven't looked at this yet. Let's have a look. So I'm gonna stay at 55 mil, so you know, it's not, this is a 55 to 300 lens, I'm not ultra zoomed in, but for me, it's about getting rid of things in the photograph that I don't want. You know, I don't, I don't need to shoot this wide, wide. You know, there's a load of mess down here of all these pine trees, some buildings that I just don't feel like I need in the frame. You know, I want to photograph this really small section here. And that's the beauty of the long lens. So, 55 mil, F9, 1 250th. And I'm just going to focus on the little tree. ISO 100, of course. Instagram, let me show you that. Let me show you that Instagram there if I can. Absolutely perfect. Look at that. I know I have confidence in this camera that I'll be able to lift them shadows up a little bit. Main thing is, so that's going to focus back on me. Main thing is that I haven't blown out that sky. As you're looking at it there, look at it, it's blown out. But trust me, there's loads of beautiful detail up there. Darker clouds, uh, whiter clouds, there's areas of blue sky, you know, patches as well. Fantastic. Just like that, we have reached the top. Oh, the top of the ravine, sorry. We're not quite up to Blee Rig just yet, but this is fantastic. Um, really steep towards the end, this section just down here. Probably a good two or three minutes of what I would call proper rock climbing. It was quite tough actually, especially with the heavy bag. So just a word of warning if you're gonna come up this route, but what a spot. You can see the sun's out, the light down into the valley there is absolutely fantastic. Now. Wainwright marks this specific spot where I'm stood now and he says there's a striking view down the gill and into the valley and he's not wrong. <laughs> so what I've done 
is um, I've grabbed one or two shots with the Olympus actually and I've tried to do some panels left to right only three or four shots um, handheld and what I've tried to do is just capture this ravine in all its glory you see we've got one cliff on this side and we've got this beautiful v-shape as we get this cliff here on the other side as well and of course that just leads it takes us down into that valley and that you know that background of side pike and lingmore fell we've got another we've got another bar in herdwick lamb i hope he's not after me trying to help his mum again mm. anyway hopefully one of those came out all right on the olympus might be one or two things to check out en route to the summit of blee rig if not I'll meet you up there. So we must be a couple of minutes from the summit of Blee Rig, but I want to grab a shot here because down at the bottom of your screen there, there's this old, it looks like a sheepfold, but um, in Wainwright's guide, he's got it down as a shelter, I think. But I don't know, along these Wainwrights, I've quite enjoyed photographing these kind of, these hotspots or pinpoints, you know, that, that Wainwright mentions in the guides, in the books, which I really like. I think that's cool. Um, on top of that, you know, like I said earlier, I was joking a little bit, but there is an element of truth in it. The background, it's done for us. Done and dusted, I think I said. Um, we've got this incredible vista of, you know, a huge bulk of the Coniston Fells and a lot of the central fells here as well. Pike of Stickle, Crinkle Crags, Bow Fell. And where we are right now, we've not had this the whole way up, but we have got um, a little bit of the Langdale Pikes as well, which is... That's what I'd be looking forward to, you know, that little vista. Um, but yeah, the sheepfold down here just gives a nice little bit of foreground element, you know, this, this ancient structure here. God knows how long it's been down there, but it just looks fantastic, you know, and it is quintessential Lakeland as well, you know. And one thing I've really started noticing, which I love, is how, um, how much the, the colour of the Lake District has changed, probably only in the past two or three weeks even it started to feel very summery now very very green and lush and i love that you know a lot of people struggle with inspiration with their landscape photography over the summer months and i get that you know it can be it can become very overwhelming and uh, just a barrage of green you know but for the most part my best advice would just to be try and embrace that in the same way that you would embrace the snow in the winter you know trying it is what it is you know it's going to change when autumn comes around um, and for me hiking you know um, summer is made for hiking and landscape photography in the fells I've started these Wainwrights at a good time really haven't I um, but yeah with regards to this shot ISO 100 f9 and 1 250th of a second on my settings for this one really simple I've just focused down on this sheepfold down here whatever it is this old structure um, and then we've just got a pretty nice vista in the background i'm shooting at around about 18 or 19 mil but over here we've got harrison stickle and then right over this side we've got pike oblisco um and they're just really look i mean you can i think that's pike yeah that's pike oblisco there look they're quite prominent by the time i've zoomed zoomed in or zoned in on those um, particular peaks you know they stand out quite nicely in the background and we actually get quite a nice left right balance there as well but it's cool and again the sky is nice the light is very um varied throughout the scene you know it really helps with the depth we've got this like as you see it now look it's really lit up in the background at the minute it's shaded here which is pretty much what we've got in the shot except when we had this like subtle merge or fade of light i don't know how to explain it it was like quite light around about here and as we came further towards the sheepfold it darkened down a little bit but i love that because we get a lot of depth and separation throughout the different sections of the photograph you know it really gives it that three-dimensional feel so it shows you, you don't need sunset or sunrise light all the time. 
This is class, this is pleasant. You still get some fantastic shots. The sky is absolutely gorgeous. And I personally am happy with this shot. Rig, we're up. Beauty. Wind's picked up a little bit. What's new? Ah, <laughs> oh, class. Fantastic views. Uh, it looks wonderful because right out back towards the east, it looks quite gloomy and ominous and uh, dark, whereas this way behind me, nice sunny day. <laughs> um, I wanted to say this actually. The way today's gone, uh, you know, as a let's say as a photography outing goes. It's been really, you know, chilled out and I, I just want to use the word decent, average, fine, you know, in terms of how inspired I felt by the day and the photographs themselves. But I want to say this because I think this is so important. This makes up like the bulk of most photographers outings, you know, um, and I think in this day and age, it's really easy to get caught up with like social media, the social media generation and Instagram especially, which at the end of the day, it's a photography app, isn't it? Um, it's, it's, it's a photography social medium. So, I don't know, just don't feel like, especially if you're a beginner, don't feel like every single photography trip that you, you, you know, that you partake in has to be mind blowing. And don't feel like you have to be coming back with quality photographs all the time. It's just not how it works. In fact, these are the most important kind of days because this is where you learn, you know, you chill out and you learn, you make mistakes. And I'm only going off my own experience, but it means that when you do get that amazing light, a couple of months down the line, you're prepared because you've had maybe three or four of these bad boys, you know, behind you. And you know how to deal with the light. You feel comfortable in a certain location. And I just feel like these sorts of days out in general are probably a little bit underrated, you know, um, really important. <laughs> So I hope that makes sense, you know, but I think it's a very important thing to say in this day and age. Anyway, I may take one or two shots, you know, the light's not bad. It's a little bit harsh, but I love the way the sky is. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to leave it there. If I take any more shots on the way back down, I'll pop them up after this little monologue. But thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your support. Please give the video a quick thumbs up if you can spare me a second. It really helps me out and be sure to subscribe if you are new. Thanks so much, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Out.